So yesterday we started just to brush up uh, what we discussed yesterday. Uh, so we started by looking at something which is which we see in general, right? On a daily basis, like we go to market, we look at fruit sellers or maybe toy sellers on the street. Yeah, maybe even the shops which have a certain display. We try to understand what a display is like. Yeah, uh, how different displays are uh, have a purpose, right? So uh, typically a fruit seller has a purpose of uh, attracting customers and selling the fruits to them. Yeah, that because his livelihood is based on that, right? So similarly, uh, when we saw the example of uh, the fashion display or what we may also call it as a window display, there was further more things to look at. So there was uh, a lot of arrangements being done. The colors were chosen in a certain way, right? And eventually we moved towards uh, museums, right? And where museums, we generally see historical objects or objects which have heritage value, something that belongs to our memory, yeah? but not one individual memory, but a group memory. Yeah, like a set of people where we belong to. Is that right? Yeah, uh, since some of you are not in India, have you visited other museums uh, abroad? And if you can share any thoughts about it quickly. Anyone here from not, not uh, residing in India right now? Yes, sir. Please go on. So it's been a long time since I visited a museum, so I don't remember much. Ah, is, is it that long? <laughs> yeah, like uh, I think the last time I visited, I was like in sixth or something. Right, right, right. Okay. Now this is, uh, yesterday we also mentioned, no? like we typically go in a train and uh, we just rush all over through the museum and uh, end up not seeing a lot of things. Did you do the same thing? No, so I usually check everything. I take a long time, like seeing all the stuff. Okay, great. Like I remember in like, uh, like how you said uh, last class, like the teacher used to like scold me because I do not move from the place. Okay, okay, fine. So I'm going to share my screen right now and uh, we'll discuss a few more things here. Right, so... Uh, we are going to discuss about the members of the art world. Now, when we say we discussed about how different types of people are around us uh, in the yesterday session. So today we will be more focused on who are the different types of people we generally come across in the art world. Yeah, uh, this is uh, focused more on the visual arts. Uh, when we say art, it could be many other things. Uh, right now, I'm just focusing on the visual arts. So here, people and places are the two uh, perspectives which we are going to look at. Uh, who are the different people working and where do we see these people working at? Yeah, so we'll uh, look at the examples that way. This is a, uh, a quick look at how uh, we are right? Like if you look at, if you assume that you are the viewer um, and you start looking at where all we can see art. Yeah. And how we can see this is uh, actually, it was made for a research I did a couple of years ago. So it's part of the mind map, which I produce for that. Uh, where there are, when you think of, okay, a viewer can uh, access art through different agencies. One is public spaces, private and online. So today we are doing it online, right? So there are several other things like it could be public galleries, like municipal galleries, where uh, the state government or the city uh, museums are uh, available to see. Uh, if anyone happens to be from Mumbai, then uh, Jahangir Art Gallery is typically a public gallery. Some of the uh, art galleries are run by a trust. 
Uh, so museums yesterday we discussed some of them are private and some of them are public but of course they are open for public all type of public spaces uh, then there are like as we go for fairs so there are also art fairs which happen there are art institutes who teach art so that's one of the agencies where we get to learn specifically about art so right now what we are doing you can treat it to be an art institute of some sort where we are getting a focused understanding of art yeah so that is one of the agencies one can look at uh, railway stations or any public transport place would have some or the other type of displays right so it could be some sort of decoration which might be there the architecture might be very interesting uh, i find in uh, in uh, mumbai the the cst the railway station, the central railway station, both uh, CST as well as Churchgate and few others, uh, which have a colonial uh, history, like which were built during the British era. And they have a wonderful uh, history, uh, also a connection to the place I studied art, JJ School of Art. So that makes it more interesting for me. And it's also a, a World Heritage uh, site as well. So railway stations, even though there might not be pictures uh, put up out there, the, the architecture itself also serves as a place of exhibiting or experiencing art because the way it is being presented. Uh, so yes, so private spaces I have listed here. We'll uh, discuss it slowly, uh, eventually with more slides ahead. <clears throat> So uh, the first member of the art world or the key member or the foremost without whom the art world can never exist is the artist or the creator. Yeah. So sometimes mostly we see that uh, most of them have trained, have a certain type of training either under an artist or at an art institute or an art school. So some of them also could be self-taught or amateur artist. So what do they do? They create art. Yeah. I hope I'm, uh, everyone is able to understand me. Yes, sir. Okay, great, great. So at any time, uh, point of time, if you think that I'm becoming too abstract, so please stop me if I, I sound too weird for you. Okay right so creating art uh, we will not look into uh, different meanings of art because there are uh, many other sessions and you have been already doing that and i'm sure uh, you'll understand the meaning of art in many ways in more sessions but right now i'll just focus on a general understanding of art where there are uh, what we generally call it as plastic arts plastic means something that has been uh made by hands where one can craft them right so and there are performing arts and plastic arts that's a general differentiation and plastic which like sculpture it can be sculpted so either it can be uh using a wood which can be carved which can be cut right so as one intends so otherwise paintings or uh, murals on a wall so uh, miniature paintings on uh, uh, Ill illustrated on uh, manuscripts so many things but why do the artists do it that's the main question here so they basically want to share an idea yeah an idea which they want to put it in a form of a visual right so and hence they put it on in whatever form which is available to them so as I mentioned about various types here, so it could be any of the forms. Yeah, and they share it. So basically they present it. And if it is publicly displayed, many, many people can see. But suppose it is uh, specifically made for a set of people, like suppose uh, a very uh, commonplace example, uh, your parents or your uh, elder brothers or sisters might be having a wedding album right uh, they are so happy to share show the wedding photographs to each other and also if you had had a 
picnic of some sort or an annual gathering yeah and there is an album and nowadays of course uh, it might be very irrelevant to you uh, looking at albums uh, because we see them on phones and uh, all sort of uh, devices we digitally we have but uh, especially the wedding album becomes a very interesting thing that we keep on looking who came and attended the wedding who all people were there how did they dress up how lovely they looked so that is one way of sharing here so that that becomes a purpose but of course it is not uh, uh, the typical or a con con conventional understanding of art we are speaking here but it is one way of sharing the purpose of sharing so it is photographed right and of course uh, a lot many people would like to become popular for the work they have done yeah uh, so either they are ambitious about it or not but reaching out to the world is one of the intentions of making art uh, so some artists may have different views some may not at all think about sharing it and just create it for themselves and may be happy with that so there will be different uh, ways of looking at it but the primary or the the what do you say member of art world is the artist does that make sense to all of you yes sir okay great great yeah and i'm assuming that a, a lot of we already know it so not something very new i might say but uh, putting it together might make more sense so we'll try to understand it together okay um so here are few examples we are going to look based on the purpose an artist does uh, an artwork for a certain purpose so here on the left hand side you are looking at an altar piece yeah uh, this is in a church right so you can see that the painting is at the center so there are panels out here right and one can actually turn them like a cupboard and shut them so there would be other paintings on the rarer side maybe not necessarily it will be there so here the artist's purpose is to make something for a location so there is uh, where it is being exhibited also becomes how it will be experienced yeah uh, any place which has colorful designs and uh, illustrations would be attractive for anyone so the moment you are in a, a religious place like a church one would find it very interesting that okay there is a story which is being told and i would i am interested to look at a story which is being told through wonderful colors yeah wonderfully painted uh, methods maybe on the ceiling as well so you see there is a uh, it's not just one set of paintings and everything is blank but each and every area here displays some or the other thought which either an architect or an artist or a sculptor everyone who has worked to build this place has thought about right so this is another uh, in continuation to yesterday's uh, uh, point so exhibition this is also a form of exhibition here is a manuscript yeah and that manuscript uh, is in arabic so some of the indian uh, stories were written down and also painted in folios uh, and it became those stories became so popular they became viral throughout the world yeah the way we say that some videos go viral so it became so popular because they got translated they got illustrated yeah and of course in the physical form so this is one way of looking at it and yesterday i mentioned that um no i will be mentioning about it that these folios are small something that can be held in the hand and seen with up close in your hands so artists contribute to the exhibition or a display or a, a certain view in a sort in this manner so that becomes more interesting yeah so there are few more exhibition uh, places where we look at the displays where an artist interacts with the public 
So here in the center, there is an artist who made a donut shaped object. Yeah, is it a donut? Can I just pick it and eat? What do you think? Can I just pick it up? No, sir. Then what do you feel about it? It's very large. It's very large. How large? Mm. Half of the building behind it. Okay. Okay. And how do you know that? Because it's kept like close to the other object. Right. Uh, the okay. Suppose it is a trick photography that it is uh, kept on a window pane and then photographed. Is it possible? Yes, sir. Yeah. But, no, but the reflection of the buildings are also there. Right, 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 right. Something, something, one more interesting thing about it about the public display of this object. Sir, it mirrors. Yeah, it, it is, it is a, a shiny surface which has a mirror-like quality. Yes, very much. But how do you know it is very big? There are people standing around. Precisely, precisely. That itself gives you a sense that how big the object is, right? Okay, so uh, on the other hand, we see that artists are uh, exhibiting their work. Uh, the one on the left, you can see some painted houses. So uh, in Rajasthan, there is a region called as Shekhawati. So where the houses are painting with painted with different stories and illustrations. Yeah, and they're amazingly decorative. So you can see that this is one of the views one can look at. Yeah, isn't it amazing to have a painted, altogether painted house? Would you like the like one of them? Yeah, would you like to paint your own house like this? What do you think? Yes, anyone? Yes. yes. Yeah. Since and the screen, to paint, then it would be great. Uh, could you please repeat that? If parents allowed to paint on the walls, then it would. Right. Be great. Right. 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 You know, uh, this is a very interesting point you said. Uh, so all artists also have to prove themselves that they are good at it. Yeah. So then only people will allow them to paint on their walls. Right. So something, uh, it's a mixture of skill and talent. Right. So one has to, uh, both ideas and skill has to be acquired so that you, certainly your parents will, once you say that, okay, I'm good at it now and you'll prove it. Probably your parents will allow to do that as well. Sir, but after we paint a wall, if no one takes care of the wall or if due to water leakage or something, anyways, the painting will get spoiled again. No? Certainly, certainly. If you notice this very image, that's the purpose I have chosen this image. Uh, any object which is in outdoors, I'm sure like uh, Umka must have spoken about these things. When they are in outdoors, they are uh, bound to experience such uh, disasters, right? So either it would they would be drenched in water. So if they are not maintained well over the period of time, sometimes they might be even repainted over and over. Yeah. So all those things happen. Now, this is an example where we see that it has not been taken care at all. Yeah, are almost ignored and hence this area or if you look at the some of the bricks here are uh, come out. So such things happen to the places if they are not maintained. So maintenance is a kind of an ongoing thing, something as we do dusting in our house. So as uh, we have to take care here as well. Coming to this particular sculpture, which is again a very interesting uh, uh, sculpture to look at. Any, anyone does, do you know who, who this man is? If you don't, doesn't matter. But what do you feel when you look at him? Is it Alexander or something? No. It's a Greek sculpture maybe. Yes, it is a Greek sculpture. I, I don't want to get into the details, so I will avoid uh, giving you the details right now. But if you can tell me uh, what you feel looking at it. 
what is the man trying to do maybe instruct something or show something right right okay what else nobody else okay let me share what i feel about him uh something that elisa mentioned that he's telling people something i i certainly feel that you know telling that baby decide yeah it is oh, a baby that. okay uh does the baby telling have some that we need to go there you need to go there okay right 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 okay what else what else fine so uh, i will share some things here like something i when i just look at it even though i might not know much about the sculpture i will just try to understand what i feel about it so one uh, the man is trying to share that hey look there there is something important yeah so since the uh, it is a sculpture i always feel when someone makes a sculpture uh, the idea has to be very clear because it takes a lot of efforts to make a sculpture so what i feel here is that he is a probably a warrior who is uh, wearing all the armaments uh, his uh what you can call it as a chest plate and he's uh, being guarded enough right but he's not just uh, waging a war he's not holding a sword yeah he's not on a, a war field but he's standing with a poise he's relatively relaxed but he's also maybe very commanding enough some somebody like a maybe a minister or a leader yet yeah, do you all feel that could he be a leader yes sir because is uh, that clothing has also some more details of angels and everything right 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 yeah so this greek sculpture which is uh, apparently made in marble gives us a lot many interesting things how what clothing they are wearing so probably he is wearing some like something like a shorts yeah we guys nowadays wear at work from home right so he is working on on his job maybe yeah and he is wearing uh, an armor yeah and look at his sleeves so curly and uh, so it looks very decorative also right yeah and there is some uh, uh, something also for that we very finely carved on his armor maybe a story yeah okay so this is another way of exhibiting you know uh, in back in rome um, in ancient times they used to put up these uh, bust of their kings yeah of their current kings so something like if we go to a school i don't know about your schools uh, but if there are any uh, leaders freedom fighters or any uh, uh old po political leaders whose photographs are being put up on the walls of the school have does anyone relate with that visual like maybe mahatma gandhi or any other leader for example no yes sir okay okay uh since this the window is shared i am keeping it minimal so if you it would be great if you could respond as soon as possible okay so that i know that you are following what i am trying to share with you great great so uh, the purpose of putting up busts was that uh, like this man uh, he is probably augustus and he is trying to say hey i am the king here yeah and he is not just uh, rudely saying it but with a poise he is relaxed right so some similar busts were kept in different offices saying that hey you need to work properly i am watching you yeah so that could have been a possible use of a bust yeah behave properly i am watching you 
So in absence of uh, CCTV, these people had busts where people were became conscious. Oh, if I don't work well, maybe our king is watching us. What if I um, goof up with something? So I need to follow the rules or I need to follow the orders properly and things like that. So that is one of the purposes of a uh, sculpture like this. So here, uh, the central one, which is by Anish Kapoor, it gives us a sense how it is a public sculpture and does it mean anything? It might mean something, but it is amazing to just see our own reflections out there, isn't it? Yeah, it is being twisted, it will distorted in some so many ways. Something like we take our selfies, you know, all our selfies do not have an intact mouth or an eye. So some or the other ear or nose or would be, I said, uh, pulled apart and twisted. Don't you think so? Yes, sir. Okay, great, great, great. So let's let's continue. Right. Okay, so here we are looking at some more people from the art world. Now, uh, I'm sure all of you can read quickly and uh, I will elaborate on different uh, roles. You know, the art world uh, not necessarily has a very good structure where everyone has one particular job. Okay, something like if one somebody studied engineering, they would be engineers. Yeah, they would be probably doing something related to engineering. But in art world, uh, it is not necessarily that everyone is trained to do something. Sometimes they develop interest, sometimes they have certain skill sets and they end up doing what they are doing. So they might be good at it. They might be, uh, they have a very peculiar insights, a certain understanding of art and they do what they do. Yeah. Now, what they do is our concern right now. So curators, uh, as it is written here, are people often educated in art history and philosophy who are given creative control over the conceptual development and ex execution of exhibition. Right. And there will be other people who, who like exhibition coordinators who will actually execute it. Uh, most of the times, uh, there might not be an exhibition coordinator who is actually executing it or sometimes it also there might be so it depends on several things like whether there is a good budget uh, to have more people on the board to put up an exhibition because uh, putting up exhibition requires a lot of resources time money space permissions and so many different things so one has to take care of several things so yes curators have uh, one of the major roles to play uh, when it comes to putting up an exhibition. But not all exhibitions require a curator. If there is one, nothing like it. But one can always, with their own common uh, understanding or uh, a standard practice, can certainly put up exhibition. Sometimes artists also become curators of, the, of an exhibition or they can uh, put a exhibition of other artists yeah does that make sense is it fine yes sir okay great great yeah so now there as i mentioned uh, art dealer agent and art consultant so there are different roles this 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 part might be slightly boring uh, but this is the art world which requires all this these many people something like we have a bank we have a uh, where we store our money and whenever we are required we use it from them right um, i'm sure it's, it's not as simple as i'm saying right now and then there are people who bring different things to us yeah like uh, the delivery people bringing different objects like when we uh, order it on amazon so there requires a number of people who can make things work yeah so as we discussed somebody mentioned about uh, can we sell art uh, art in exhibition yes so our dealers help in doing that so agents also at times they also help in doing that and art consultants help in promoting the uh, the art objects and often it is seen that there is no one role or one uh, 
individual or a separate in individuals doing this but it could be one person doing all the jobs together yeah so that's briefly what uh, these set of people do are we good with this yes sir okay now the third point is about critics yeah we generally the word critic or criticism is taken only as someone who says negative about you yeah or something that you do negatively right so uh, that becomes very challenging when we say uh, oh like this is you have done it in a really bad manner yeah so that's a common understanding that who someone who criticizes you is always criticizing your uh, in a negative way but critics do more yeah it is not only about saying whether it is good or bad yeah but also to try and understand what the artist has actually done yeah it is always uh, impossible to understand what an artist is doing because it only only happens in the artist mind but for sure the critics have a certain insight yeah the way you are looking at art uh, you are attending these many sessions and trying to understand about art so the critics also undergo a similar training yeah they train themselves not if not formally in an institute they train themselves to look at art read about read a lot about art history and other subjects related to art uh, something about culture so understanding culture is also equally important so they can appreciate art and reach out to the viewers and write about it especially right so critics um, how do they reach out to the people is through writing or literature yeah and further there are art historians art historians so as the word itself says that they are people who write or record history yeah the way uh, you must have uh, all your uh, mark sheets uh, birth certificate or your um, what do you say maybe some award you won some certificates about that all of them put together yeah art historians actually do this for art yeah they try to put all the records some of them could be missing so they try to understand and analyze what could have been the missing link yeah how to understand it suppose someone did a painting and left it in between so why would one leave it in between something like for example in egypt we could understand that uh, how egyptian paintings were made only when one we uh, one of the archaeologists found out that was an incomplete painting yeah uh, which gave us the markings of how the drawings was made were made and uh, how what proportions they used did they use any scale yeah uh, did they use any uh, what what you can call it as a certain tool yeah to copy them or how they made the heads yeah so all of this could be revealed when art historians or archaeologists study them right and uh, just to go back to the earlier parts some art historians can also be curators because they understand about art some of them can be critics if they are criticizing uh, or writing about art or talking about art in a certain way yeah and then comes uh, the art writers so there are multiple roles what an art writer would do commonly it is to promote art yeah when we say promote art not only to publish or uh, advertise it but to say what are the good values in it yeah and why does one have to uh, write or say good about art any thought any clue about it so could you repeat again yeah uh, i said art writers help in promoting the art yeah so why is it necessary to promote art if it is good then people will like it right then why do we have to write about it so that they understand uh, what all the uh, what all the artist was thinking and uh, to know more about the art how it was formed when it was formed right 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 so uh, just to add on that it might not be only about something that is historical or very old it can be about something very recent as well yeah something like we also we have artists here we have uh, uh, many members who are already here and they are also painting 
yeah art on the something someone writes on their work as well yeah so it is to uh, give out different perspectives about the art yeah so and where is it published so sometimes it could be published as a review in a magazine or in or a daily newspapers blogs yeah whatever uh, medias are available or a catalog yeah so where the written material or the text allows the viewer to enter what all are the ideas one can explore here so in a way a person coming all together from a different context or a lifestyle might find it easy to enter the art by reading it yeah it is not always that the uh, the uh, written material will always help in better understanding of art or experiencing art but it will certainly help in entering what is being painted or sculpted or whatever is made as plastic art yeah does that make sense to all of you okay yeah so might be i'm sure it might be slightly boring that okay now why do why are we actually going to discuss about this yeah are you feeling so you can frankly say so i don't mind nobody's okay people are so polite right okay uh so when i said it's about people where do the people work yeah where uh, it requires a connection right so this is a, a short list of places where these people can be found to be working with yeah uh, the curators as we discussed yesterday work with museums either private or public right so private uh, just to elaborate on private museums they would have a certain specific collection right it might be of modern art it might be of uh, a certain period where they are interested in and continuously collecting about it uh, some people are uh, maybe just fascinated with unusual objects maybe sandals yeah people have craze of collecting sandals also right have you seen anyone collecting sandals or mugs no yeah people have a uh, funny and weird kind of uh, what do you say habit of collecting different things yeah uh, but here it is also about the different uh, art objects yeah and that's where certain museums come like uh, i don't know if you are aware of a museum where uh, we can find the uh, uh, different type of stones right different type of minerals uh if you happen ever happen to visit pune uh, there is a interesting uh, place called as uh, deccan college yeah basically and they have a wonderful museum which tells us about how our ancestors lived yeah and there are so many stone tools and several things are kept out there so a range of minerals are to be found which our ancestors might have used so that also becomes one type of collection and a museum right uh, further we come to art galleries which again uh, as mentioned it can be public and private but the private ones are uh, primarily interested in promoting art both in terms of commerce and a wider outreach of more of a art which is contemporary yeah which is happening today right the artists who are uh, who might have just uh, recently passed away or say let's say uh, about 100 years ago yeah and those also who are living so private art galleries are generally interested in promoting art of recent artists and not very 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 historical yeah does that make sense any questions or doubts so far or comments yes sir i have it out yes please please shoot it sir so a person who finds about the previous old artists like all the earlier artists so what is they call critics or art historians uh, could you please repeat the question the people who find about all old artists like pablo picasso vincent van gogh and all so right. what are the people called these people called critics or art historians right right 
so it is depend it depends on the type of work they are doing so if they are systematically doing it then they are art historians yeah i, I do not say that uh, critics won't do syst work systematically but uh, it is in terms of studying how they study so art history as history has a certain discipline of uh, writing down things so if there is a methodology what we generally use the word as if they are following it then they are art historians okay or if they are uh, just not following a particular method but they are uh, more interested in appreciating it aesthetically by their own understanding so they might be critics and so the roles who plays what role can be interchangeable depending on the amount of work and uh, study they are putting into yeah and often it is difficult to uh, say who is who yeah because uh, in art world people wear different caps yeah does that answer your question yes sir okay okay great so we will quickly uh, if i request you to read through the definition of a museum yeah uh, icom is international council of museums most of the uh, world museums of, are affiliated to this particular council where they follow a certain set of uh, guidelines and regulations in uh, storing heritage objects yeah so the uh, the definition says a museum is a non profit permanent institution in the service of society and its development open to the public which acquires conserves researches communicates and exhibits the tangible and intangible heritage of humanity so so long we have been discussing about tangible heritage right the objects which we can see which we we may touch or hold which exists in front of us right so some of the things which are intangible can anyone think of an intangible heritage or things we have nan have you have you heard your grandmother or grandparents telling you a story do you remember that any any old person saying us telling you a story or giving you an advice or sharing a memory with you yes sir yeah okay yeah so that exactly the sharing they do is we call it as oral history yeah so and oral history is a form of intangible heritage right something that uh, in indian context we refer to vedic literature yeah the vedas are spoken yeah they were not initially written down but they were verbally transferred from one to one generation to the other so that becomes oral tradition so those traditions are also intangible right so that's one example i think uh, suffices the description is it good enough okay great great so tangible intangible heritage of humanity and its environment for the purpose of education study and enjoyment so they are not nowhere saying it is only meant for serious thing but we should be also able to enjoy it something we try uh, we are trying to do through these sessions as well right looking at our own uh, things around how we are looking at art are we only looking at it or also enjoying it or also studying it so all the possibilities of looking at art okay right so now uh, we are the next uh, space is art organizations so some organizations who help in promoting art and art related uh, discussions yeah so those are called as art organizations so they ne they need not always uh, engage in sale or sell selling art like the art galleries but here they would promote different aspects of uh, reaching out to the audience what the artist has actually done or what one art particular means to someone right 
so art organizations would avail uh, make available a platform where these discussions can happen similarly cultural organizations also would do the same thing but culture when we say cultural organizations they would have uh, art as one of the components they, some of them might be interested in uh, uh, community histories yeah they, they, we have so many different communities so they might be interested in community histories someone might be interested in languages someone might be uh, interested in um, literature performing arts right so uh, holistically uh, the organization which have multiple uh, what do you say roles or uh, interests art becomes one of them and cultural organizations allow for that kind of uh, space where different again there can be art writers historians curators artists critics everyone coming together over there yeah does that make sense yes, sir. okay great great yeah i can anyone tell me what is the uh, picture in view what is this place? Mumbaikers here, if you don't tell me, please leave the class. Sir, it is an art gallery in, I guess, CST. Sir, it is a museum. Yeah, who says it is a museum? Sir, I Okay, yeah, it is uh, the Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj Vastu Sangrahalaya. Yeah, uh, it is a museum. It was built, and especially the interesting part is the museum is also an art object. Yeah, is an architectural marvel, you know, because of the dome. It's such a huge dome, right? And the style of architecture as well. So I won't uh, go into detail of that right now. Uh, but when and next time, whenever you go, just look at the details. Yeah, what are the style of pillars out there? how the domes are being made, what are the arches like, yeah? Maybe you'll enjoy, and of course, there are descriptions written out there, which will give more information about it. Okay, now uh, coming to auction houses. Uh, so the word itself says they uh, are interested in commerce of related to art. So selling art, something like Christie's and Sotheby's and uh, in Mumbai, which is Saffron Art. So these auction houses, help in promoting and selling art in the in the monetary transaction of art yeah so this is also very valuable because it makes art worthy not only in terms of cultural value but economic value too so that that is one part of auction houses uh, artists run spaces in recent times it was it is seen that uh, there is no much flexibility which can be uh, seen in how different organizations may off, uh, work. So we want, artists may want more freedom in working. They might want to uh, live in a particular space and work in the flexible manner. So artists themselves uh, open up their studios to different uh, people, maybe artists or anyone who is in, uh, curious about art and welcome them to the spaces where they can interact and discuss informally about art. Yeah, and that's what we called as artist run spaces. Uh, a slightly more structured uh, place is art residencies where artists and uh, similarly uh, interested people go there, live for a, say a duration about a month, three months, a year, yeah depending on the resources available and uh, the each uh, space would uh, allow for and go and interact and peacefully work there yeah uh, so that when they interact with other people they might get new insights and also uh, have different perspective about their own work their art might change or their way they, the, they look at their own practice might change and yeah, and they get to live in a different space, uh, which is not similar to their studio and also challenge themselves to look at newer things. Yeah. Are we good? I hope all of you are going fine with this and not very bored. 
people look bored here are you jahan what do you think are you bored no i am actually taking notes okay see wonderful wonderful thank you okay now this is an insight to uh, some more exhibition spaces and how we interact with these spaces on the left there is a shrine it's also a form of exhibition which is grand yeah of course a, a place for uh, worship and a uh, pilgrimage for many people but it is also attractive it is artistic it's decorative right so yes it can be looked at as an artistic practice don't you think so yeah and free for anyone to come in so more and more people visit especially during uh, this place is uh, in pune which is called as chatushringi yeah and uh, a lot of pilgrims visit it during navratri on the right hand side uh, soon enough you'll be uh, talking with the artist who is also with us shakuntala kulkarni yeah she finds it interesting that how to work in open space not only with uh, and she is wearing an armor which is also specifically made with a certain design sense yeah so now she is trying to pose herself in a open space right so here how she relates with this particular armor herself as a person and there is a, there is a lot of a lot of stories and references where she comes from i don't want to uh, elaborate that because i am sure that she will be mentioning about these aspects in her session uh, but here there is a different way of looking at not only typically or conventionally looking at experiencing art in an art gallery or a museum but in a public space as well yeah she once walked across a road wearing a similar armor and it was quite an experience for her i'm sure she'll be sharing that as well now on the left hand bottom an art gallery where objects art objects sculptures are being displayed and you can see that they are almost very well lit yeah so this is how we can get a space enough space around to move around uh maybe stoop over and see uh, the art on the right hand bottom is another uh, display where an artist uh, vidya kamath who has displayed her work in front of a public space so she finds a certain uh, cause or her ideas has to be shared with a wider audience and hence she is just chosen the asiatic society uh, library or the town hall a uh, facade as her place of display right and that's where she is trying to engage with wider audience so when we speak about exhibition it may not be only in a closed door but it can happen at various places so i i hope that by far all of you have got a fair sense of what exhibition means right okay great great now i am going to share something of my own yeah uh not because it is great but there is a perspective or a certain uh, effort which has been taken here so you can notice that it is uh, again an exhibition but there are many other things happening yeah here uh, it was my exhibition of my drawings put up in a, uh, on an art gallery in pune what all different efforts i took so that people engage more so i am sure all of you are able to see the four five images here some of you might recognize who the people are yeah so if you notice that there are people sitting on the mattress and making drawings here so there are kids also who are engaged in making drawings 
a man who is holding something like a magazine uh, and watching the drawings up close, right? Similarly, the same action is being performed here. And there are discussions happening about maybe, of course, you can spot me here, right? And can you see this red line out there? Yes, sir. So can you tell me the purpose of that red line? We're not supposed to cross that line. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and why is it useful? So that um, people know to keep the distance and not to destroy the paintings. Right, right, right. So am I sh sh uh, saying it loud that don't cross this line? Yeah, it's just a suggestion, right? Yeah, so this is one of the tiny efforts I took in making this uh, like the display as well. And keeping the mattress helped me uh, to engage with the audience more. Yeah, where a lot of people could sit and just enjoy drawing may not be very a, a very serious act of making drawings or uh, for long hours, but they really enjoyed being there. Yeah. Okay. So this is uh, another setup. What I tried to do was I had made a work on a piece of cloth, which was hung from the ceiling. So people had to lift their head up to see the work. And this allowed that generally we see all artworks on uh, at eye level generally yeah and in this case i tried to break that uh, mode and i wanted people to look up to the work yeah in a in a different way so this was one of the small attempts i made to engage the audience in a different way here i had invited a few speakers to speak about the idea of drawing what drawing means and how uh, it is to be pursued and uh, and you can see that there is audience who are listening and also interacting with each other right so when we set up an exhibition it may not always be sufficient enough that you just put up the display and say you look for yourself and be done so as an artist in current times, it is responsibility of an artist to also engage with the audiences so that they are able to engage and enjoy the work even more. Yeah, I hope uh, that makes sense to all of you. Yes, sir. Yeah, so here simply there, there was a text about the exhibition. Uh, in two languages, which was in English and Marathi. The purpose was that I, if there are people who are coming, uh, it was in Pune, so most people could read Marathi, but if someone who couldn't read Marathi, then they could read English. Yeah, uh, Putting up in more languages becomes cumbersome and also difficult to put up. Uh, display might not look really well with too many texts put up around. So I limited it to two languages. Yes. So uh, this is another example where we can see uh, Dr. Sudhir Patwadhan's display. Different arrangements where there are screens which are being used to uh, to differentiate between spaces. Okay. Uh, some of you, if you have visited the space of NGMA Mumbai, so you could see how the lights appear. This is one way of displaying smaller works have been put together here. Uh, so there is a certain way of uh, putting vertical and horizontal works. There is a cluster which is being created in another exhibition. Uh, you can read the artist name as well. And it is a rubric or a kind of a mixed cluster which is being created of both vertical and horizontal works. And this of course is one uh, single set of work on different panels. Okay, so I will just uh, stop the sharing here before I continue with uh, sharing my personal works. I would like to understand how did you find this discussion?
sir i actually get an idea about how art artist work should be presented or mm-hmm. exhibited as he said mm-hmm. uh, and who are the people working in that uh, area or like museum and you say uh, etc art galleries and art organization etc right. yeah i get uh, yeah i just get the whole idea about what you said great great thank you jahan anyone else would like to add in sir it was very interesting i understood like there is not just art there are many more fields in art and i understood the works of them what mm-hmm. exactly right 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 yeah uh, the purpose of sharing this was mainly to make you aware that as uh, your school teachers plan for your teaching plans right something they might be preparing for your lectures uh, your parents plan for your school right when to leave and uh, drop you to the school what you should learn what toys you could you can uh, you should buy yeah and also uh, enjoy them and all sort of things uh, there is a lot of work which goes behind each of it right so i just wanted to give you a glimpse of that whenever we see an art exhibition there are so many people involved uh, yet i haven't mentioned several other people who are involved in making this happen yeah so uh, the basic idea is that uh, even to put up an art exhibition requires a lot of efforts and planning because when people come for viewing they enjoy it in many ways right they experience art in many ways yes uh, also for those who want to opt a career in art gets to know the options yes certainly certainly yes eventually uh, when if you any of you think that okay you are good in writing you have amazing writing skills then probably you could think of becoming an art writer maybe or maybe then you have more analytical skills and maybe you can become a critic yeah uh, it eventually it depends on your interest and what kind of training you would take uh, what specific area of art you would like to look at right so that's largely about the art world if you have questions we will uh, address them or if you want to share something of your uh experience okay i met an art critic and he i found it to be very interesting or maybe he was too boring and not at all uh, impressive so you can share whatever you think today's session was uh, it was a theory kind of session than the previous one yes 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 right okay Atharva would like would you like to say some words yes i think uh, so why do people you know have a belief that when you go to the art world you become poor or nobody goes to the art world to become rich so uh, every you know painter or every artist i visit you know they are not very rich uh, they are not so it's also the people's uh, concept that if you If you're an artist, that you're a poor. So why does that? Right. Why do people? Yeah, a, a wonderful thought here. Yeah. So uh, basically, art world. One element which I left. Yeah, I wanted to hear this very words that it is about the people. Yeah, when you exhibit, if there are no people to watch it, how the art world will become rich? Yeah. So it requires. interested people in watching art experiencing art people who can spend at least 30 minutes in an art gallery and not just few minutes and run away and go to the next restaurant next door yeah so that's something uh, today session was intended so that uh, you can get a sense that oh it's not just putting up an exhibition or not just making art because there is also transportation in, involved in it installing the artworks so several things which we i haven't discussed and i don't want to bore you with 
but it's quite an effort to put up an exhibition and i'm sure all the artists on the panel would uh, agree with me on that yeah okay right so, so project do you think i have missed out any points if you i, I should further elaborate on that no, I think, yeah, very much done. I want you to share your work and also Nikhil, you can uh, tell maybe about uh, these courses which have opened up uh, maybe a few years back, new courses, as a curation and how just mention about that. Sure, sure. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to share the screen again and uh, let's see some of my works. Okay, I don't know how you are going to actually view these. So I'm eager to understand your responses. Yes, so I'm all ears people. So I'm going to uh, share a few works here and then uh, wait for your responses. Yes. I'm going to share a few insights on how these were made and what about. But before uh, I go ahead, I would like to hear from all of you. What is the size and material? Okay. Yeah, they are made uh, on a small A4 size paper, most of them. Yeah, so something uh, as big as uh, your A4 size printed paper. So the one on this, uh, the, the square one is about five by five inch. And this is again, almost like a A4 size sheet. And uh, I've used uh, pens, micro tip pens to make these. Okay, that was a teaser for the activity today. Okay, I think I should turn it around and say that let's come begin with this activity today. Okay. What does this read? I want all of you to read it aloud. No right, no wrong. Each one of you. No right, no wrong. No right, no wrong. Great, great. Keep going. No right, no wrong. Thank you, Vishnu. Are these the only number of participants here? No right, no wrong. Okay, okay, great, great. Quick, quick. Yes, Atharva. Okay, is everyone done? Okay, so now the activity here, I'm not going to give you any homework, but right away, you saw some of my drawings, right? 
uh, as the words here mentioned, the four words, no right, no wrong. So I want you to take it literally and speak as many things you can speak about the works here. Right? Is the idea clear? Can you repeat? Yeah, the, the purpose of this activity is to speak about the few works I have shared with you. Yeah, and uh, there is nothing wrong or nothing right about it. So each one of you can have a different perspective, right? And it could be right. It could be wrong too. We don't know. Yeah. But I want all of you to say something, what you feel about the work, what you think about the work. If you think it is, it is not really good, say so. I won't mind felt that there is some problem going in the ecosystem, ecosystem. You have yes around. Okay. let's do it slightly systematically i'll share the screen again and with each work you can start uh, speaking yeah is that a good plan okay great great Yes. So work number one. Sir, um, that dots on which the people have, uh, on which they climb, uh, they are humans, which I can see, because mm -hmm. there is a person on the uh, left hand, sorry, on the right hand side, and they are eating each other. I mean, the white white people are eating black dots oh okay the white people are eating black dots okay that that's an interesting interpretation thank so you there is something problem with the humans are eating you oh okay right 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 wonderful yes so to, uh, it looks like a uh, a tornado and everyone uh -huh. is being swept away. Wow. They don't want to go. Uh -huh. It also kind of looks really funny. Like everyone on top of each other step. <laughs> right, 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 right. That's a wonderful thought. Yes. Thank so you. according to me, it looks like a hole. Like some people are dead and are going inside it. And some people are born and are coming out of it. Oh. Wow, wow. Uh, I felt like uh, uh, this is the behavior of different kind of people. Like the one in the uh, left side, it's like a monkey. No, it's on four legs. So like sometimes the human behavior is like animals. We can like that. Amazing, amazing. Like thank you, thank you. Yes. Anyone else? Yeah, I'm not forcing all of you to uh, uh, speak on each work. If you relate with it, if you have any thoughts, please feel free. No right, no wrong. Okay, shall I move to the next image? Sir, mm -hmm. it looks like a ballerina running away from a crowd. Okay. Running home, I think. Right, running home. She's bored of dancing and she just wants to flee. Wow, that's, that's a very interesting thought. I think that the black dots are over and the white people are hungry. So now they started eating. Um, oh, wow, wow. 
their community. Okay, okay. This something kind of reminds me of the uh, the match in England, you know, the British people running out, out of the stadium. What Ayati described right now. Okay. Yes, let's continue. Uh, I feel like uh, when someone tries to take a different path, everyone is trying to pull him back in. Like everybody is trying to get him back. The one is away. Hmm, 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 hmm. Nice, nice. Okay. I can relate it to the British era where a freedom fighter is shouting to all Indians and the Britishers are running behind him to kill him. Okay. Okay. Uh, and I could again relate it with the behavior of people because um, the person who comes out of all the restrictions is at the front and the others, they are being pulled back. Like, they're not able to come out. Right, right. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Anyone else? Sir, they are very cute. They are cute. Oh my God. Thank you. Yes. Should we move to the next image? Yes. The left one, uh, mm -hmm. I feel like uh, the animals are trapped in a loop. Even if they are running, they just came back over and over and again and again. Wonderful. Wonderful, Jahan. Thanks for that observation. Yes, any, any other thoughts? I feel that for everything, there must be a start and an end. That's why only the start and end of the animals are shown. Right, 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 right. Great, great. You guys are so brilliant at interpreting things. Amazing. That's all. Aditya, Atharva, there are so many people around here. The picture on the right, I, can, I think so. A oh, lord or Lord Indra is standing and below, like clouds are from the clouds, rain is falling. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Uh, so the first one, it looks like um, the animals are running to catch their own backs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, could be, could be. Okay. So is there anyone else? Vishnu, would you like to say something? Actually, I have a doubt, sir. Please, please shoot it. In the left picture, mm -hmm. other animal, the rabbit, second one, in mm -hmm. the rabbit. The first half is white, while the other half is black. Right, right, yes. That, that's an amazing observation here again. Why is it there? Yeah, yeah. Maybe the artist made a mistake of overdoing the drawing. What do you think? Could that be a possibility? Yes, Vishnu, what do you think? Could it be a mistake? No, uh, this is a very minimal drawing. Uh -huh. There are only few things, few details. So. 
right right so do you mean to say that the chance for mistake is less here yeah okay great great right so there is nothing wrong and nothing right it, it's all about your perception yeah um, i will share few things about my practice and not about these works a uh, few things is that one of the things when i used to travel uh, in the local train uh, especially i work with an organization even though i am trained as a uh, an artist i generally don't get much time to sit and work as a studio practitioner so i found out a way that why not start make uh, carrying some papers small size papers in the train and i can make sketches on it on them right so that's how i started like 10 minutes 15 minutes uh, drawings i started making and eventually uh, a lot of them project has already seen uh, there were hundreds of drawings which i could make yeah and i was happy with that because uh, it became a meditative process for me because that 15 minutes i was so engaged in just focusing on that i could not feel that i am traveling uh, daily like uh, sometimes the travel could take about an hour hour and half at at times depending on where i'm uh, traveling from and to so sometimes it could be just 15 minutes yeah so this allowed me that every different situation it allowed me different types of drawings and every time i was inspired or uh, kind of provoked by different thoughts to draw and that allowed me to make different drawings every time so that was the process of some of these drawings and those drawings which have figures human figures of course it it, it does not allow me to sit in a train and work yeah because they require a certain uh, stability in the hand and i made them at home but then uh, in in a way as uh, i think uh, yeah liz mentioned that yes i am very much interested i try to see the people around me and maybe that uh, i keep on observing people and some of my drawings might reflect that those observations maybe not very in a literal sense but more often that observation just comes into my work yeah so that has been a general journey of my art practice so i continue doing making these drawings as long as i'm interested maybe the moment i i feel bored about them i might change and do something else yeah does that sound like a good plan for me yes i think we have spoken quite at a stretch yeah uh, if there are more comments and points i would i'm open to discussing those so um in the previous um the picture that you showed the uh, the donut shaped uh, object um that it can also be created by putting it putting a that kind of object like very close mm -hmm. Uh, and then taking the picture right certainly certainly what we so may call it as a photographic gimmick yeah we can play with the photography as well yes so what what, what is your question um so so then you can't believe all that you see right like um like if you are looking at an object you can't really like um understand what they are, what the they are meaning or what it what is behind it right 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 so exactly no right no wrong yeah okay sir so it is your perception you take it with you isn't it so that's why i didn't want to speak more about my work or uh, describe each of them to you because you have wonderfully interpreted it and that's what i want you to carry with you and not my interpretation of my work for you yeah 